Township in Washington. It's a college for the deaf and hard of hearing. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with Moon on the Meadow. Gallaudet published this. It's a 30-year compilation of all my poems that had been published in literary magazines up until 2008. The first poem is called Asylum. I paint my walls a harvest wheat, Van Gogh's straw hat, his maize reeds fraying. Against this hue, blue hydrangeas crowd the stone cream pitcher. I would drink this milk, this gold light, periwinkle, powder slate. That originally appeared in the Southern Review. Uh, black and white, I have come upon some black and white photographs of my parents' early courtship. And um, this poem originally appeared in Three Penny Review. Black and white. In one shot, my mother wears a scrapless gown. Her raven hair waves down to her shoulders, a diamond clip sweeping a stubborn strand. Her heart-shaped bodice, smooth folds of black satin, narrows to the waistline, reels away to layers of silky silver print. Her legs are crossed. One dangling shoe peeks out at 12 men standing at the bar. They nurse bottles of beer, angled heads tipped in her direction. In shiny sharp suits and neck knots loosening, they drink her in, oblivious to the cameraman who will become my father. <laughs> Through the aperture, his lenses focus. His shuttered heart opens and gasps. Later, in the dark room, he will ease the solution as her eyes swim toward him. He will enlarge many copies. He will hang her up to dry. following Stephen's poem about the, the hair from the woman on the bus. Do you guys remember that poem earlier today? It's called Ex Libris, and it originally appeared in Southwest Review. Ex Libris. I hold a book borrowed from you, its ivory slowly yellowing. Your dust filters and settles on my hands. When I reach the part where the sweethearts kiss, a hair from your head curls against the page, black and gray. I pry a nail beneath one end, dislodge its rooted barb. The hair slides toward my ribs and rests there, thin. On the vellum leaf, the absent filament makes its mark. A curved impression, gentle gorge, a sharpened scythe. This novel ends on a dog-eared sheet, your hair the only footnote. The leather cover lies gilt-edged, closed, the title there engraved. I have uh, spent a year teaching in India, and uh, this originally appeared in Story South. Flight to India. Above the Mediterranean, toward the Arab Arabian Sea, through low banks of clouds, the sun sets in the west. Its long rays stretch, fingers of fading light. From Istanbul to Bombay, the wails of mullahs rise, tambourines and tablas, the imam's eerie cry. Women in flowing robes, secret jewels, veiled eyes flashing, orchids in the agra, tangerines, pomegranates, dates and figs, goat's heads severed. I'm lost and drowning. A, boi a bony finger points the way to yearning's cobbled path. 
the petals, the peasant, patchouli and myrrh, dung and marigold, jasmine bowers. Beloved, I shall return to tell you these things. Uh, one of my early teachers and mentors was the late poet Anthony Hecht. I wrote this poem for him as a kind of homage, and I read it at the Sewanee Writers Conference, after which his now widow came up to me and said, did you mess around with my husband? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Reprieve. At 81, the weary poet lies asleep, his aching bones long dry. The clock strikes two. His virgin student creeps along the corridor, hears his ragged breath, tries the clacking doorknob. He stirs and sits upright. Her dress spills moonlight, blue wildflowers grasped and falling from her hands. This poem is an absidarian poem that was originally published in the Bear River Review. Um, Bear River is sponsored by the University of Michigan, and uh, I'm from Michigan, and uh, they have a wonderful summertime writers' conference that I'll be going to in May. The Love Zone ABCs a romance. Angular and agile, a babe unbridled, Corinna Crow decided to dine early and eat at Frank's Fine Foods. She gamely glanced at goulash, hash browns, ham, when Ivan, the itinerant, iterated a jocular joust, kinky, kinetic, laced with lewd meaning. My monkey, she moaned. <laughs> Nudging nearer, she noticed his open and opulent pocket, pert pen pencils perched, quartered near his quaking, rakish ribs. Steamy and smarmy, the tart turned to utter her ultimatum. Villainous vixen, Karina wet her wants, exhaled excitedly and exhorted him to ecstasy. She yelled, yes, yes, zesty, zealous, zoned. <laughs> Earth science for college lovers everywhere. They met behind the hanging maps to cram for their exams. A library lamp, their only compass rose. She studied skin geography, all his global boundaries, setting warm fronts, scale and key. Sounding sea depths, grottos, canyons, they marked the brushy forests, noted latitude and longitude. To chart her floating islands, he moved closer to her shelf. On the brimming edge of fault lines, lost in tropical disturbance, plates collided, vast, tectonic. After continental drift, once the jet stream had receded, from the plateaus and the plains, they contemplated clouds. <laughs> uh, Two Winters is a little chapbook that I wrote while I was lucky enough to um, be in residency for a month at the Vermont Studio Center. And uh, the poems in this collection are from that time. I had driven. 16 hours to get there for the, the first day of the <coughs> residency. And so this poem is called Sleep. <laughs> sleep, blessed sleep, let me drink some of that elixir. For my head is nodding, my eyelids droop, and my bones are weary of this world. From my bedroom's radiator, the hissing steam shushes. Sleep. Let me drown in the dewy folds of her leafy dress. Lay me down on a bed of pussy willow buds. Cover me with a blanket of owl feathers. Pat my river hair till my breathing is no more than a tuft of fur on the wind. 
when you leave me, steal softly out of the room. Don't even let the doorknob click. And the book that's coming out tomorrow, Mother Mail, a chapbook that I wrote within the, the past year. I'd like to read a few poems from here. Um, when our dear and much missed Claudia Emerson was teaching at Mary Washington, um, she and her students ran this little magazine called Conflict Us, and uh, she took one of my poems for that. I am the mother of six children, now adult, five grandchildren, and of course, as they <coughs> move through their teenage years, there's a bit of, how shall we say, experimentation that goes on. <coughs> Hovering, sung with the acid-laced pupils, what hollow thing eats at you? Is your mind-body meandering, nothing more than youthful gaming? Or does death knock at your ribcage, its filthy fingers picking at your mortar? Stand down from the sledge before the quicksand covers you, and I can no longer cup your fleeting pulse. He's okay. <laughs> He's alive. And living in Richmond. Um, I am Jewish, and Yom Kippur is, of course, one of our holiest days of the year, Day of Atonement. Uh, this poem, Yom Kippur, was written in a workshop I had um, with Gerald Stern. And 